agony of defeat. Sorry. Next time, don't break your hip. There we go. I tried it. Live to fight another day. I'm done. I'm going to let you self interview. I'll be back. No, I don't want to talk to myself. Here's my expansive crew up at 4.40 in the morning to 57 degrees or so first thing this morning. Boy, if it stayed like this, this would be awesome. That's not going to happen. Here's Tim Smith. Hey, Tim. Good luck to you, buddy. It's good to see you. Here's the Missouri contingency. James, I got Missouri here. This first climb, it wasn't terrible. The weather's awesome right now. It won't last. We enjoy it while we can. Yeah. Now we got about a six mile downhill. Nice steady slope. Very pretty trail. The temperatures are incredible. I think I'll be saying that later too. Pigsty. Find up for an adventure. Get more money for. Trail finally turned into a trail. Yeah. Coming into Lions Ridge. Oh Peter, how you feeling, man? Sorry. The trail's been awful morning. up to yeah, this I'm point. Really good. Good. Doing well. Worst of it's over. Yeah, man. Too warm yet, but warmer than it was. You want to say hello, Stephen? Okay, we just passed over Red Star Ridge. Start warm up a little bit, but it's not terrible. You can hear the ice in my back. Now the problem is. This is the eight and a half mile section. 
and I think I have about three miles of ice. So we're about mile 19 or so. Got about six more miles into the next aid station. And I'm gonna be chasing cutoffs all day, I have a feeling. Another climb. They don't look that big on the elevation chart. Well, there's a few things that have worked well so far. The uh, ice on the back has made it about four miles. And uh, body glide, squirrel's nut butter. I am lubed up better than a porn star. Got a couple miles left to get down to Duncan Canyon. This is about eight and a half mile section. And they said it would be a three bottler. And I have two bottles. My buddy Chris, hey. he looks fantastic. <laughs> Not as good as Eric. Oh no, man, I'm hot out here. I know, are you out of water? Just about. Yeah, me too. Is there a, a river down there? Uh, <clears throat> boy, I like the idea of there being a river down there. So okay, I think there's a river down there. Let's go with that. Yeah. All right, coming down into Duncan Canyon. All right. Yeah. Hey, video, baby. Two, six. There we go. There we go, right there. There's Stuart. I just want to catch him. This guy was awesome. Give me a full of ice. Thanks a lot. All right. Hey, do you need a sponge here? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. That feels so freaking good. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. You're so do. All right, this is what aid station? Duncan Canyon. All right, good deal. How come they put you so far away? So we're coming down out of Duncan Canyon into some other canyon. I don't know what canyon this is, but I'm starting to get a sense for what they mean by the heat in the canyons. Just all of a sudden, you'll just get covered up with this sweltering blanket. No breeze for a little bit and then you bake, and then you get a little bit of breeze and it gets a little warmer. Ice is so critical on this. I got it in my hat, I got it in the, the Tammy thing that we got a patent, and I got it on my back. Next stop, I'm gonna start putting it down my jersey. A couple things here compared to Leadville. Now, first of all, the first section of this race was much more technical than I expected. Not the climb. But once you get out of there and you get into the slop and the rocks, it was just tougher than I thought it'd be. The other differences, uh, besides the heat, this is a dry heat though, and that does make a difference. And also I'd say there's much more oxygen here. And I think that is just so nice of the race organizers to provide that. Not a trail race unless you fall. Climbing in the heat sucks. Oh, I was feeling pretty good for a while, but like the old adage goes, if you're feeling good, just wait a little while, it'll pass. You came in you We're in Robinson Flat, and uh, oh, that was really tough. Long two-mile climb. Nikki Kimball, who's won the race, told us not to worry about it. She said that was the tightest cutoff because of how bad the course was with snow and mud. It's kind of nice to have a former champion rooting me on. It's got about a mile climb. Hopefully some downhill. I think we deserve downhill. Look at that, we got a little downhill. How about that? Oh, feels good, but after a while, start looking forward to the uphill again. Miller's defeat. You there. Watch anything. Water. No, I'm good to go. You want me to, okay, you, you guys just dunked or anything. Nobody has done a better job on All ice right. than, than you guys. Right so on. All right. oh, man. see ya. And uh, we've got about 38 and a half miles on so far. It's 5.3 miles down to uh, the next aid station, and I've already forgotten what it is. Uh, <clears throat> the synapses are not firing all that well, but I'll tell you what, all this ice. I feel like a big ice cuber. When I run, you can't believe the sound I make. It's pretty impressive. And to be able to run with 60 pounds of ice, getting a good workout. Always some good running down this section. 
I think it'll be bad running when we get to the bottom and have to turn around and go up the other side. Holy crap. That's a long ways down. We've got a little toasted through here. I don't think it was a fire. It was just the heat. Every once in a while, it's just like you get this sauna blast. It rolls over you. We're pulling into last chance. I'm not sure I like the sound of that. This might be interesting. We're heading down to Devil's Thumb. And once I get down there, we're gonna have a really tough climb. So you probably won't be hearing from me much. I only like to videotape when I'm feeling partially normal. And the temperatures are going up as we head into the valley. Or canyons, they're not valleys, they're canyons around here. Oh my God. I thought I was looking forward to the descent. And that last mile and a half was brutal. Oop, I'm bouncing. The cutoff horn at Devil's Thumb just sounded. I think I beat it by about five minutes. I uh, hope my buddy Chris Oles made it through there. He was uh, struggling a little bit there. Uh, well, who wasn't? But, uh, all right, we got a little downhill. They say downhill, but it doesn't look downhill to me. Hopefully I can make the next cutoff and have an opportunity to at least start heading out to Michigan Bluff and see Dan and Tammy. And you wait. And you still wait. And then you wait some more. <laughs> Here I am trying to beat a cutoff again. Getting eaten up by the bugs, so it's gonna be close. Got point by then. So he's thinking he's gonna change shoes at the next stop. Where did he go to? He just went in there. I see him. see him. I'll go find out. Here comes 386. Welcome, Zelko. Thanks very much. Okay. I'm pulling the plug. And it was had nothing to do with my outstanding crew. I would never, I would have never made it this far in that heat. My hip is not behaving, and my lack of proper training has uh, not made it any easier either. This is my fancy handiwork. Yep. Even though you put it on upside down. I could just stay here, and you guys could pick me up in the morning. It's really <laughs> You like you like the chair? Pretty comfortable. Comfortable chair. Yeah. We'll douse you in bug spray and just leave you sitting there. So that's 62.82 miles, 11,873 feet of climb. I busted hip. 12 miles on snow and mud and freaking blast furnace in the canyons. Isn't that amazing in one race you can go through snow and then oh, 30 degrees? I think I get that fixed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back in Missouri. It's been about a week since out of Western States. Thought about it a lot. I have a million reasons why I deserved a DNF. I didn't deserve to start the race with a stress fracture and a labral tear and all those kinds of things. But once I was there, it was like I was all in and my mind was set on finishing. And I got to that mile 50 or so and the hip started to bother me and I pulled the plug at 62. And I can't tell you to this moment if it was the right decision. You should have just kind of done this. And the heat was every bit as bad as, as advertised, but ice strategy is important. I had uh, great ice consultants in Tammy and Dan. They did a great job. And the, the volunteers, volunteers at each of the aid stations were absolutely first class. They were tremendous. I mean, they were stuffing ice everywhere, places where I can't even show you. You just keep going back to that moment, sitting in that chair. Probably shouldn't have had a chair to begin with. Maybe that was the problem. And I said I'd never do it again, but you know, I've lied like that a lot of times before.